Chunk 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 Hey everybody, John Yasa here back with another exciting episode of Practical MDO. Today this one's kind of more uh, subjective. We're just showing some examples of groupings for different systems engineering problems. The reason why I'm showing you these is to kind of get a feel for examples of real world systems and how we set them up in OpenMDAO. I would definitely suggest not starting with this lesson if you haven't already seen using groups to organize models or some others that I'll link in the description below. Really, I just want to show you a, a few different examples that I've worked on that we had to group in certain ways, and I think we grouped them pretty well. These groupings might be because of disciplinary or computational reasons. We'll first start with an extremely simple beam problem. This is just to show you know, an example of a, a few components that are coming together within groups and how some information is being passed between them. Then we'll move on to a much more complex open error structure problem. This is an error structural wing design problem. We have different disciplines and many groups and subgroups interacting together. Next up, we have a fun wind turbine design problem in Wisdom, which is one of uh, the National Renewable Energy Labs codes that is focused on doing wind turbine design, including many different disciplines. Last up, we'll have an example from PyCycle, which is a turbine engine design tool. Because we're modeling the flow through different elements or components of the engine, there are many different groups and many different variables that are being passed between these groups. This creates a very complex example, which is kind of fun to go through together. Here we have an n-squared diagram of a simple beam problem. This beam problem is one found from the OpenMDO documentation. This code evaluates the performance of a finite element beam. In this case, it takes in the height, computes the moments of inertia, and then the stiffness matrix, computes the displacement of the beam under a certain loading, and then shows you the compliance, which is kind of the bending of the beam. This is all laid out here in this n-squared diagram. We see here there are five components, and in reality, there's just one input and one output for each one of the components. Again, these inputs and outputs can be vectors or arrays, so it's not like a scalar value, but there's still just one type of input and one type of output for each component. This is one way to break up your model. Each component is doing just one thing. It takes in one input, gives you one output. This is a very straightforward way to organize your system. You know exactly what each component does. It's not like there are 20 inputs and 20 outputs, but I would almost say this is maybe too simple. If you were actually making a model and you had five different components here, some of them you could probably combine together if it makes sense to combine them. However, here, and again, this is coming from the OpenMDO tutorial, it's kind of the most simple, realistic system that we can think of. So this makes sense for this case. Again, it's really simple. We just have one input and one output for each of the components, uh, but let's take a look at a more complex case. This is an example of an N2 diagram that's coming out of Open Aerostruct. Open Aerostruct is an open source tool to perform aerostructural wing design. So here, this is you know, more complex than the beam problem, and in fact, it coincidentally contains a beam problem of its own. That's the structural of the aerostructural design. Additionally, we have the aerodynamic analysis. So let's take a look at kind of how we divided these groups here. So we have the baseline model again. Then we have a wing group. This is anything pertaining to the wing, including the thickness of the structure, the kind of radius of the structure as well, anything to do with the geometry of the wing, such as the twist or the cord as well. Then we have something called AS.0, or aerostructural point zero. It's called point zero because we might have many different points in the aerostructural design space that we're interested in, in evaluating the performance, but here we just have one. So for this AS.0, we have a group within here called coupled and a group called wing perf for wing performance. So let's take a look at why these groups exist here. Here, the coupled group has this backwards coupling. This is what contains the aerodynamic and the structural trade-offs in the coupling between these two different disciplines. This uh, coupling is solved by a solver within the OpenMDO setup, and then the outputs from the solver, once it's converged, are passed on to the wing performance group. So here there's a group that's just as big as it needs to be to resolve this coupling using a solver. We could put a solver on the entire AS.0 group, but then there's no coupling here. We would not need to have these additional components or groups within that solver as well. So we have a group within this group here, this coupled group, and it's just big enough to capture all of the coupling necessary. Let's take a quick look within this coupled group. I will expand some of these, and you can see that within this coupled group, for instance, we have many different other groups. We have the wing group, the aerostates group, and then the wing loads component. Again, groups here are shown in this kind of darker blue and components are shown in this lighter blue. And we can expand any one of these and see uh, any more component information, including the inputs and outputs to it. So again, in this case, I'm showing a more complex way of grouping things. And they're kind of grouped up in this case by physicality or by disciplines. We have up here the, the wing and the tube group. So that's anything to do with the geometry, like I mentioned before. And then this contains anything to do with the aerostructural side of things. 
Then we have the aerodynamics and, and kind of the structures here as well. So here I would say the breakup is a little bit computational, but it's mostly based on the disciplinary breakdown of this problem. Additionally, each one of these groups may be mostly based on the discipline that they come from, but there are also groups that have to do with all disciplines in the problem. For instance, total performance here contains information about the aerostructural performance of the aircraft. This includes the fuel burn, the center of gravity, the lift and the weight. This right here you can think of as a discipline. In this case, it's kind of the totality of the aircraft. It's not just the aerodynamics or the aerostructural, it's everything together. You can imagine that if we had additional aerostructural points that we care about, there would be additional groups here at this level, maybe called AS.1, AS.2. And you can imagine that if we had not just a singular lifting surface that we care about, but we had a wing and a tail, for instance, there would be another group up here containing information about that tail. So here it's not even homogenous Then when I said we care about the disciplines, we also care about the physicality of the system and we can break it down by wings, tails, whatever the lifting surface is. And then those inputs go into the disciplinary breakup of the groups. So I wish there was a, a very clear answer and I could say, hey, always break it up by physicality, you know, the actual geometry of the, the system that you're interested in, or break it up by discipline or, or break it up by the computations, the actual solvers. But there's honestly a mix. Now, often it's very heterogeneous how you choose to set up your groups and your groups within groups. And it, it takes some time. It takes some iteration. This was not the first way that Open Aerostruct was set up. It was set up in many different ways before converging on this. I'm also going to discuss a non-aircraft example. Here is an N2 diagram from Wisdom, which is a wind turbine modeling tool. I really like this as an example for this, this lecture because it really follows the idea of a physicality behind the group organization. So again, we have this top level model and then we have something called WT, which stands for wind turbine. Then if you follow the load path uh, of what a wind turbine actually experiences, we have the wind going into the rotor. Okay, rotor SE, rotor systems engineering is the first kind of group here. And then those rotors are spinning and it goes into the generator or the drive shaft. Then we have drive SE. The generator is producing uh, loads that act on the tower supporting the wind turbine, and this goes into tower SE. And then we have some turbine constraints as well, based on kind of the buckling for the tower, any sort of blade constraints within rotor SE that get propagated down. And then we have something called TCC, which stands for turbine capital cost. So it's the cost of creating this wind turbine. Again, it's taking in information from the rotor, as well as the drivetrain, as well as the tower, and it's able to compute kind of a capital cost. So this follows a, a very clear and intuitive system where we have the loads coming in from the wind to the blade, they go down to the drivetrain, they go to the tower, and then you can calculate the cost here. It wouldn't make sense to try to calculate the cost before everything else, and it wouldn't make sense to have these groups set up so that something about the rotor was within tower SE, or, or something about the drivetrain was within capital cost. It, it really makes sense to have everything about the rotor contained in rotor SE. Anything that you need gets passed on down to a, a different group or component. Additionally, if you had multiple wind turbines here, you might have wind turbine one, wind turbine two, three, four, or however many are in the farm. This idea of kind of stamping out groups here is very important. It's something that I want to rehash uh, again and again, the idea of using reusable groups on purpose so that you can code something once and make sure that it's useful for many different problems. Here, an example might be if you're doing detailed wind turbine design and you're changing the, the cord and the twist of the blade, for instance, you just need one wind turbine. But if you're doing a farm design, you might need 10 wind turbines. And then you could easily stamp out one wind turbine group for each one of the wind turbines you're trying to represent. The idea of making reusable groups is, is very important, especially if you're working on a team. Then you could have this wind turbine model, pass it off to somebody else, and it's very easy for them to pick it up and say, okay, these are the inputs that you need, these are the outputs. I know how this can hook up within my system. And again, I'm showing you the N2 here, and I'm not really zooming in with, with too much, but you can click and expand any one of these things to better understand what the inputs and outputs are. I highly recommend if you get a model to, to really look at this in detail and understand what these inputs and outputs mean for how to integrate this model within everything else. Even within each one of these groups, we have many subgroups that make sense. For example, within the tower module here, we have a, a kind of series based on the physicality, again, following intuition of what the tower is experiencing. And it's just within one of the actual components within here. And it's just within one of the actual groups within the entire wind turbine. This actually goes in order of transforming wind into power by showing the physicality of the system as represented by open MDAO groups. We're going to end with a doozy here. I have up an n squared of a Pi cycle model. Pi cycle is an engine modeling tool that helps us evaluate aircraft propulsion system performance. Its creation and use is an amazing stress test for open MDAO because it has so many interconnected and complicated groups. Let's talk about some of them here. If you're not familiar with engine vocabulary, do not worry. It's not necessarily important for this lecture, but just know that there are many different groups here that represent physical systems within an engine. There are so many different groups here. Each one of these is a group. Let's click on the burner, for instance. 
and see that within here, we have the inflow, we have the mix of the fuel, we have some sort of pressure loss, we have the flow, and then the outflow as well. So again, each one of these groups represents a physical system. And then within there, we have again, kind of the physicality of the air or the pressure within there. This is a very complex set of systems. Again, we have this group design and within there a burner, within there a mixed fuel, for instance, and then a component there. It's very easy to see that there's a lot going on here. Here, for instance, I can expand out one of the, the high pressure turbines. We see here a component map, which shows kind of the efficiency in, in mapping this within the engine. So again, we have the design group, the high pressure turbine group, a map group, and then a read map component within there. If this component just lived at the top level, it would be so hard to understand what's going on here between the variables, how to pass them, what this looks like. Uh, again, PyCycle is an amazing demonstration of many different nested groups. Let's take a look at the top level again and just take a look at what's going on here. So we have design, and then we have some off design conditions as well. These look a lot like the design condition, but in terms of engine design, they're actually a little bit different. That being said, we have essentially the same setup for the engine here. If we zoom in here, for example, on uh, off design part power, we see you know the inlet, the fan, the low pressure compressor, the high pressure compressor, etc. So again, these are the physical setups of the system, but within a different OpenMDO group now. When I said before that we need to care about making reusable groups, I mean it. If we had to code up each one of these groups by hand, that would be terrible. But because we made them once, we're able to kind of stamp them out here for the design case, stamp them out again for one off design case and another off design case. This kind of engine could be used within a full aircraft design optimization as well. We could include the wing, the tail, the weights and balances of the aircraft. And by having this engine model that could stand alone or within a larger integrated group is very helpful. A lot of careful thought went into how to divide these groups, how to make sure that they make sense both physically and computationally, and how to make sure that we can solve them well in this large MDO problem. I think PyCycle is again, probably the best example of a very complex nested group system. So again, this lecture is just to show off a few different models and how the groups are contained within them. I hope that you learned something from, from seeing some of these different disciplinary and computational breakdowns for real world examples, and that you can apply some of them to your own systems engineering problems. Please make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Guys, gals, and non-binary pals, thank you for watching.